Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I'm Tom and I'm standing at Belmont Station on the CTA red, purple, and brown lines. It is a really hot day in Chicago today. It might even be hotter than anything I've experienced in DC this summer. So I'm visiting Chicago again briefly and since I've left, a lot has changed in the Chicago transit scene. Now, today I'm going to show you what I think is the biggest change. It's not the fact that the buses have changed the way their screens look. It's not even the fact that part of the blue line is completely ripped up. Today, I'm gonna to show you the progress on the red-purple modernization. So what is the red-purple modernization? So the red-purple modernization program, or RPM as I will call it from now on, is part of a larger program to improve the CTA red line called Red Ahead. The red line is the busiest of all the L lines, and in some places it is still reliant on century-old infrastructure. On the south side, the line will be extended down to 130th Street, but RPM, and thus today's video, focuses more on the north side. Here, trains use the tracks of the old Northwestern Elevated Railroad. The oldest parts of the line date back to 1901 and the rest to 1908. Back then, the section north of Wilson was at ground level, but in 1922 that part was elevated to match the rest of the line. The goal of RPM is to replace these aging elevated tracks. The project is split into two phases. Phase 1 tackles the area just north of Belmont, as well as the tracks between Wilson and Thorndale. Phase 2 will be the other parts of the line, as well as the purple line up in Evanston. We will be taking a closer look at Phase 1 today. The first project to be completed were improvements north of Belmont. Some new track was added, but most importantly, a ramp was built to separate brown line trains from red and purple. Previously, outbound brown line trains had to cross over a north and southbound track to branch off towards Kimball. Since November 2021, when the new flyover was delivered, trains no longer have to wait for each other at this choke point. Now for the tracks between Wilson and Thorndale. Originally, there were four tracks. The outer tracks were for Purple Express, while the inner two were for Red Line local trains. In 2021, Lawrence and Berwyn stations were temporarily closed. Argyle and Bryn Mawr were also demolished but given new temporary stations. Trains began to use only the two western tracks. The eastern tracks were torn down and replaced with a new concrete structure. In the summer of 2023, that new structure was finished. Trains shifted over to the two new tracks, and now the western tracks are being demolished and rebuilt in the same way. Lawrence and Berwyn are still closed, while Argyll and Bryn Mawr have once again received new temporary structures. Ultimately, there will be four flashy new stations on this line, but today I'm here to visit the new temporary stations that just opened. My red line train is about to get here, and we're going to take it to see some of the construction. We're on a red line train headed north to Howard now. So, from Belmont to Sheridan, nothing has changed much since before the summer. But then, on approach to Wilson, things get different. For the past two years, all trains have used the western platform at Wilson, and the eastern platform was closed. With RPM now in the next step of phase one, it's swapped. We now arrive at the eastern platform, while it's the western platform that's closed. Soon we see the new viaduct. This is getting exciting. The entire time I lived in Chicago, this was under construction. And now it's completed. Though I love the old metal elevated structures that Chicago is famous for, I have to admit this does look very modern. We'll check out the Argyle Temporary Station in a little bit, but first let's go all the way to Bryn Mawr. Thorndale is next. In the direction of travel, doors open on the left at Thorndale. 
extending customers, please do not leap against the doors. Nope, just kidding. The next station is Thorndale. There was no space to build a temporary northbound platform at Bryn Mawr, so only southbound red line trains stop here. Looking out the side windows, it's clear that they've already come a long way with the demolition. So this is Thorndale. From this point on, nothing really changes. It's quadruple track up to Howard, so the Purple Line Express can actually run express. Um, but it was like that before the big change. The change, of course, was between Wilson and Thorndale. From the end of the platform here, you can get a view of where the new tracks and the construction zone begin. Taking the train on the new tracks was nice. They look really good, but also the ride felt a little bit smoother and definitely quieter. I think it'll be an improvement for the neighborhood. Now you'll have noticed that we didn't stop at Bryn Mawr station. That's because there's no space for a northbound platform at Bryn Mawr. So we're going to take a red line train back to Bryn Mawr and explore that temporary station next. This is the temporary Bryn Mawr station. It definitely feels very temporary. Let me show you some of the materials that the station is made out of. All right, so that's wood. These floors are also wood. If you look at this station sign, that's definitely like a printed canvas type material that's cheaper than the regular signs. They've got these chicken wire, oh no, they're, they're like a fabric mesh. But there are some more, let's call it permanent features to the station, like the departure screens, like the heated waiting area for the winter, which you, if I even think about that right now, ugh. You know what's not temporary? Those tracks over there. That's brand new and built to last. Perhaps the best view of the construction zone is here at Bryn Mawr. The tracks have been ripped out, but over here, much of the old viaduct is still standing. Let's head down to the equally temporary station building. Down here at street level, you can really see the difference between the old and new structures. Eventually, there will be a tall, four-track concrete structure here, complete with a new building. 
but now it's all wood. So even downstairs, it's all made out of wood. Even the little station attendant's office, it's, it's kind of weird. What I do like is that they gave the outside this bright red color, the big CTA logo, makes it look still somewhat official and professional, even if the inside does kind of look like a construction zone. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I'm, it's good that it's temporary, but for something temporary, it looks really good. Remember, Howard bound trains do not stop here. Luckily, there is plenty of signage around the station warning people of that. Time to get on a southbound train and check out Argyle. This is the Argyle Temporary Station. Once again, really got that temporary feel, but we got ourselves a nice island platform so it can serve both directions. With the staircase in the middle of the platform, it gives us a cool opportunity to take a look under this temporary wooden platform and to safely get up close and personal with the tracks. So the station building outside is kind of the bright red just like at Bryn Mawr. I have to say it again, I really like it. Also the wood kind of makes it smell nice, I don't know. The station attendant downstairs was such a nice guy, we chatted for like five minutes and then I was like, shoot, I have to take videos of everything before the next train comes. So that's how far we are with the red purple modernization. Honestly, it's a good thing that these tracks are getting upgraded. And I'm mostly just very happy that they came up with a solution to allow trains to continue running. So often with construction projects like this, American transit lines will just shut down for a period of time. So what's next? Well, this phase is supposed to last until 2025 when all four permanent stations between Wilson and Thorndale will reopen and there will be four tracks again. Meanwhile, the CTA has begun their study for phase two, which includes the remaining sections of red and purple north of Belmont. Once the study is completed at the end of the year, environmental reviews and engineering can begin. The future will hold upgraded stations and tracks, but the CTA is also considering other improvements like extending red line trains to 10 cars from the current eight. We shall see what happens. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. There's never been a better time. I'm about to release some exciting new content. We'll see you next time.